Hi, this is the second video of our product launch series. I'm Yelena, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the perfect Amazon PPC structure for uh, product launches. Basically, um, I wanted to teach you what was the best structure that has worked for us. And we have, when we launch a new product, we usually have around four or five different campaigns that are just dedicated to that specific product. So that's probably a lot more from what you have expected uh, or what you currently have running, but um, this is a kind of strategy that has proven to be very elaborate for us and work really, really, really well in terms of ranking. So that being said, outside of running this internal traffic on sponsored uh, on Seller Central for sponsored uh, brands and sponsored products ads, we also run external traffic to the listing. And this is something that Amazon really, really loves. So by all means, if you can make sure to drive uh, external traffic from other sources to your Amazon listing, then this is something that's going to be very, very helpful for your uh, listing to get ranked. Um, also, aside from that, you should make sure that you have as much ramped up sales velocity as you can possibly have, because this is like 95% of organic ranking. So, um, just before we begin, I wanted to let you know that you should be ready to lose money in the first couple of weeks, even a couple of months, if that's a product that you're launching in a very competitive category. So uh, what I mean by that is that you should just uh, look at it more like a business investment rather than business expenses, simply because this money will flow back right uh, to your bank account through sales and also through um, sales that come organically that you didn't actually directly pay for. So um, that being said, let's dive right into the perfect Amazon PPC account structure for product launches. First of all, the first campaign type that you should run out of the five campaigns that I've prepared for today is an automated campaign. Auto campaigns are the campaign types that are very valuable in terms of um, automating the keyword research for you. You will first of all know what kind of keywords your listing is ranking for. So um, you will also pay for the system's feedback about what the system thinks that your product is. So if your uh, search term report after two weeks of running an automated campaign is uh, sending you garbage feedback like, you know, uh, bad search terms, something that's unrelated to your listing, that's irrelevant or maybe slightly different from what your product actually is, then by all means that uh, probably means that you need to improve your listing quality. You have to make it more keyword dense or more relevant to the user and just make sure that it's um, that it has it contains some keywords so that it ranks better. So that's where uh, the true value of automated campaigns come into place, comes into place. So uh, first of all, I would recommend for this one product, uh, if you can possibly afford this budget, daily budget, to be $100 per day. This is um, something that might sound like a little over the top, like a little too much, but at the same time, it's not going to spend that much. At least in my experience, it hasn't been the case. We have tested various automated campaigns. Um, simply for new listings, it's not going to spend that much. But if you want to give it a lot of budget, uh, a lot of air for this campaign to run uh, so that you can get good quality feedback even, you know, uh, in a short time frame like two weeks. So uh, automated campaigns, uh, their main advantages is they will uh, provide you feedback from the system, what the system thinks about your product. They will automate the keyword research so that you uh, somewhat automatically know what keywords you might be uh, ranking for that you aren't targeting yet that should be um, moved to your manual campaign. And the third reason why you should use automated campaign for your product launch is basically because this uh, campaign type and automated campaign is for now covering the biggest uh, number of ad formats available. So automatically you will ensure that you're present everywhere in every possible placement. And um, that way you will kind of like ensure that you don't make any mistakes when you're targeting something manually and you're being overly picky and stuff like that. So you instead of that, you will just let the system 
show your ad wherever possible, wherever the system, the algorithm learned that this might end up uh, being a good sale for you. Uh, when it comes to automated campaigns in the first two weeks, uh, make sure that you monitor the spend and control it through bid management. So make sure that you are on top of things and that you're daily logging into your account and uh, ensuring that you're going through search term reports, adding negatives, if there's something that really should be added as a negative, and also discontinuing targeting groups that aren't working for you. How will you know whether a targeting group is working for you or not? Basically, there are four targeting groups, which is close match, um, loose match, also substitutes and uh, complements, which means um, there are four different targeting types that Amazon recently introduced in their automated campaigns. And I explain a little bit more in our other video for automated campaigns in a lot more details. So if you're interested, you can also subscribe to our channel, but also uh, go to that other video that I will put in the video description below. So automated campaign at $100 uh, per day. Um, also make sure to structure this campaign in a way that you know for sure what kind of contribution each targeting group is uh, providing you for your uh, product, which means you should have one ad group per one targeting group, which means one ad group for uh, substitutes, one ad group for, sub for complements, one ad group for loose match, one ad group for close match, which means total of four ad groups. Why is this crucial? Well, basically, this is absolutely crucial because when you download the search term report, it will break down this information by ad group. So you will know exactly what kind of um, targeting group brought you which search terms and what is their quality so so that you can easily eliminate and just pause any ad group that you feel is not contributing good results. So in order to stay on top of the things, it's extremely important for you to log in on a daily basis and just uh, make sure you monitor for overall the performance. Second campaign type that you should run on Amazon if you're just having a product launch is the reach campaign. This is going to be one manual campaign that will be sponsored products campaign type, which will uh, have its own main goal as a reach as a main goal. What does this mean? This means that you will choose, um, let's say, up to 100 keywords that are uh, high in volume but low in competition, which means they have, um, on average, medium or high number of monthly searches, and at the same time, not a lot of advertisers are competing for these keywords. And you can use some kind of external tool such as Helium 10 to identify which keywords actually belong to this category. So choose up to 100 of them. Make sure that they are very, very relevant to what your product is. And then put them in, in this campaign and give this campaign enough budget uh, to run. Again, I would recommend $100 per day because this is something that algorithm recognizes. Um, Amazon will recognize that you really, really want to rank for these keywords uh, as you're willing to give that much budget into it. So not necessarily, it will not necessarily spend that budget, but you have to be ready um, to, put, to set it up that way. So when it comes to this uh, reach campaign, up to these first uh, 100 keywords, Test them out, make sure that they have uh, enough impressions and enough visibility. So this campaign is aimed towards generating you uh, sales at a low, um, that will generate you a low ACOS sales. You need these sales. I mean, generally speaking, you need the sales um, to ensure that the ranking will start happening for your account. But uh, when it comes to, um, reach and um, when it comes to ranking strategies, these are different strategies. So uh, <coughs> since you will have a high number of uh, keywords in your campaign, then you should make sure to um, control the cost of them through bid management. This is extremely important. You want to have your bid adjustments within the suggested bid range. You will always have that range if your keyword has enough um, search volume, then Amazon will 
provide you an instant feedback about what the suggested bid is. So stay in that range, but don't overspend if you don't feel like this is being profitable for you. So that being said, uh, some kind of general recommendation of what um, your acres should be at, at its maximum is the amount of your profit margin. So if your profit margin is, you know, 35%, your ACOS shouldn't be higher than that. Otherwise, you're practically losing money in PPC, and you definitely don't want, don't, don't want to do that with a campaign whose main objective is reach. So... Um, if you see that a certain keyword is spending you a lot of money and and you calculate, it's an easy calculation for you to discover whether this is going to be a profitable sale, if it even happens. And if it's not going to be a profitable sale, then just pause this keyword or bid it down if you're more tolerant, tolerant towards cost um, in order to know uh, what to do with the rest of the keywords. Um, also, if there is a keyword that doesn't really generate you any impressions in the first two weeks, then this is something that should be discontinued. This is something that should be paused, and then you can uh, add a fresh batch of new keywords that you've discovered from the search terms report to this keyword list, and then test them, them out, and then it's a continuous cycle. So keep doing that. Also, log in daily, check how your campaign is performing, and whether your uh, keywords are generating you enough impressions. The third campaign is also a manual campaign that we run and this campaign has a very um, low number of keywords, maybe just like three or four core keywords that are 100% meaning what your product is, which means um, <clears throat> basically exactly what the product is, that's the type of keyword that you should target and you should really um, Focus on identifying what your core keywords are so that you know uh, what, what to put into this campaign. So a short number of core keywords, which is three to four keywords in your uh, uh, ranking campaign. <coughs> Sorry. So this campaign should run anywhere between $50 and $100 per day just because you want to uh, boost visibility of these keywords and make sure that they rank, uh, that you rank for the keywords that mean so much to you. If you want to start ranking for these uh, core keywords, three of the four most important keywords for your product, then you have to make sure that you have sales um, that these keywords are triggering. And the easiest way to do that is through PPC. Just... Um, your main objective for these core keywords is to be ranked for them. So if you feel like you could have more impressions, more clicks for these keywords, then your main goal for this third campaign type is to boost the ranking of, for these keywords and just ensure that you win as many clicks, as many impressions as possible. This is usually done through high bids. So if you feel like, feel like you could be getting more, then definitely improve, in, increase your uh, keyword bids up to 30% from the highest suggested bid. This means, let's say that Amazon gave you a feedback that the suggested bid is between one and one and a half dollars, um, sorry, one and two dollars. So the highest end bid would be two dollars. You should go up to 30% higher than the two dollars uh, bid. And then Put that as your keyword bid, and this should ensure that your keyword will win um, the maximum possible impressions that it can get. Yeah. So, <coughs> I'm sorry. These um, keywords, the core keywords, the core keyword campaign, which is called also called um, campaign for ranking. Um, this campaign um, should uh, help you get ranked for your core keywords and then you should get sales for, from them. Uh, but sometimes uh, some sellers are stuck in generating sales uh, coming from their core keywords because uh, either the competition has a better offer or they're cheaper or there's something going on. So if you feel like you're stuck and you're not generating enough uh, sales on a stable basis because you need sales velocity. You don't need sporadic one or two sales once in a while. You need a consistent number of sales on a daily basis, day-to-day, -day, week-to-week, month-to-month over month. 
this is something that Amazon's algorithm recognizes. So you have to make sure it's consistent and that it's a bigger number of sales. If you're stuck in this step, then introduce coupon codes. So offer some kind of discount, some kind of offer adjustment that will drive attention to your listing instead of your competitor's listing. You can uh, add a promo code. You can run external traffic to the, to the specific listing that will be um, targeted traffic oriented or do anything you can think of to help you stand out from the competition. Um, ideally, you have developed your product and thought the whole process development, uh, the whole product development uh, process through and you don't have to think about standing out through the price at this point, but some sellers um, are brave enough to enter a very competitive category and they're willing to fight for their market share through the price. So if you, this is you, make sure uh, to use a coupon code at this step for the specific campaign to help you get as many sales as possible for your keywords that you, for your core keywords that you really, really want to rent for. That being said, we'll move on to the next uh, campaign type, which is uh, competitive product targeting. This is a also a manual campaign type, which uses targeting your competitor's products through product targeting campaign to um, show up on their product pages when, when someone is looking for their product and they're looking at the details. Uh, you want to make sure that they see your ad. This is very important, but you should only use this campaign type if you're 100% confident that your product has a better offer than your competitors. So that being said, um, I also have another video, you should look it up on our channel, where I describe the whole product, product tuning and product development process, where I describe that each product has four different dimensions, which is design, functionality, time, and price. So. If you have a product that's better, that's a, that represents a better offer from your competitors in any of these four uh, product dimensions, then by all means, you should target competitors' products. So before you um, create a product targeting campaign that will target your competitors' products, then you should uh, just sit down and think and create a list of all the advantages and unique selling propositions that your product has that your competitors' products don't have. And what is the, this specific of your product that makes you stand out from the competition? Maybe they don't offer a lifetime warranty and you do. Maybe you have uh, an additional palette of colors of your product that they don't currently offer. Maybe your product is bigger for the same price or your product is cheaper. What is it? Uh, the, more, uh, the more ideas from the list you can get, the better performance is, your, is going to be for the product targeting campaign. So, that being said, you should create a list of products that don't fulfill these conditions, uh, the competitors' products who don't fulfill these conditions that you have already met, that you have, you know, certain type of offer that makes you uh, different from them. So, this is the list of products that you want to target through your competitive uh, product targeting campaign. Um, Regard, with regards to the daily budget that I would recommend, I don't know, this is uh, something that's pretty individual, so make sure that you invest as much money as you can and want in this. We don't have a very hard limit because really it depends uh, on the product type and the competition. So the higher, usually, rule of thumb, the higher the competition, and uh, if you can... The longer you, the list of your advantages of your product compared to the competition, basically this is a more budget for the product targeting campaign. If your product is a new and what, um, if, you, if you're not sure that you can really be, uh, you know, different that much from the competition, then make sure to invest some small budget for this campaign until you make sure that it works for you. If it works, then you can slowly increase budget and that will be a way for you to stay on the safe side, but still test some things out. Before you make a decision to discontinue the product targeting campaign, just make sure it's really, really not working. It, don't be, don't rush into any conclusions if they're not backed up with data. Simple as that. 
Uh, that being said, we have the, four, the, the fifth uh, campaign type that we usually run, which is uh, uh, self-targeting for product targeting. This means that you would run this one uh, little campaign with some small daily budget just to target your own product through product targeting, this one product that you're launching. And this is very important, especially in competitive, in competitive categories. You want to make sure that you consume as much uh, space on your product page as possible. And this is one of way of doing it. You definitely don't want your customers' focus to shift away from the competition and let them steal away market share from you, um, steal away your users. So this is the way uh, that it would be kind of like brand protective campaign for you where you would protect your product from um, attempts to steal away market share from. So one little campaign, a small daily budget would work uh, just uh, for you to ensure that this is going to be uh, effective uh, in terms of protecting your, protecting your product. So that being said, this is the basic campaign structure that we use when we launch our own products. Um, there are also additional uh, campaign types such as sponsor brands uh, ads that we also run for our products. If we have a product launch that's within an existing portfolio of products, but if you're launching a brand new product and this is a whole new brand, you are not established yet, then in most of the cases, you're not going to be brand registered, which is one of the conditions uh, that you have to meet even before initiating sponsored brands ads. So make sure you get brand registered and then you can introduce sponsored brands ads as an additional step for you to get ranked uh, better on your, uh, and just to make, ensure that you have enough uh, brand awareness in your um, category. So. Basically, that being said, that's the wrap up of this video. I hope you like it. And if you like this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you have any, any questions, then by all means, comment below. Thank you for watching and have a lovely, lovely day.